Hey everyone, Sky King here, and today I'm going to show you how to use PBR texture sets in a traditional specular or metallic workflow. Let's get into it. Before I begin, I would like to let you know that this video is brought to you by GameTextures.com. GameTextures.com offers thousands of game-ready materials for various platforms such as Substance Painter, Unreal Engine, Unity, World Creator, Blender, Arnold, and V-Ray. Simply drag and drop into your favorite game engine, texture designer, or 3D editor for immediate professional results. Also, GameTextures.com is designed to seamlessly work with Substance Designer, allowing you to tweak every texture to fit your exacting needs and to help you create the perfect bespoke materials for your project. GameTextures.com is an amazing asset with a built-in interactive 3D viewer, easy downloads, and no additional software needed. You no longer have to sweat the details when there are literally thousands of game-ready textures at GameTextures.com. Tweak in your texture editor or game engine to get it exactly right, and you're done. GameTextures.com is utilized by some of the biggest industry players such as Sony, Sega, and Activision. So you know the textures you are using are some pro assets that will make your project AAA quality and stand out from the crowd. Go to GameTextures.com today and get your free materials now. So a lot of games allow you to mod them. Some games are still using older engines or the engine you're using to build your game doesn't utilize PBR materials. Now this isn't a crash course into PBR materials or the difference between PBR materials versus more traditional material workflows, but this will give you a general idea of how to use PBR material sets like you could get from GameTextures.com and use them in workflows that are more traditional specular and metallic texture sets. With most texture generating programs such as Substance Painter and Substance Designer, the workflow and output is based around PBR material workflows. Although you can set them up for use in specular metallic workflows, sometimes the results are less than satisfactory. So what we're going to focus on is taking output PBR materials from Substance and utilizing them in a traditional specular or metallic workflow. So let's dive in. So here we are in Photoshop and the first thing that we're going to do is go ahead and drop in all of our textures. So the first texture that we have here out of the five that I got, which is the stone moss, moldy stone, grass and flagstone. I took our flagstone texture and I will take the albedo and AO and set those in here. And I'll put the AO on top of the albedo and rasterize both layers. And I'm going to set the AO to multiply. And now we're done there. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in a folder and just call this flagstone. Now, the next thing is we might not like the stylized look of this flagstone, but we really like the pattern. We might not like the colors. So we're going to overlay a stone texture on top of this. So with our stone texture, I will grab the albedo and ambient occlusion and throw it on top. Now there's really not a, a really anything in the ambient occlusion, so I'll get rid of that but I will rasterize this and I'm going to set this to overlay. Now, as you can see, we have this stone texture on top of our flagstone, but we still get those colors. So here in flagstone, I'm gonna add a couple of adjustment layers. The first thing is this hue and saturation, and I'm just gonna drag this saturation down a little bit, but we're gonna brighten it up because the overlay has darkened everything a bit. So we'll go to brightness and contrast and just raise this up a touch. And there we go. If you want, you can also do a, another hue and saturation and set it to colorize. Find a color that you might like. And now you can have yourself a nice gray looking stone if you didn't like this colors. So we'll keep it right here for right now. Next up, I would like to have moss growing in between all of the cracks. So next up, I will grab our grass texture and grab the AO and the albedo. And I will rasterize those and set the AO. And here the AO is a bit whitewashed out. So I'm going to adjust the levels and just pull this down a bit. We don't want to clip the blacks like this just down to about the edge and then set that to multiply and you can kind of see the difference here just a slight difference but it is there and we'll go ahead and rasterize that now 
This of course is overlaying the stones. So how can we take care of this and get the grass just between the stones? I'll show you. Let's go back to our flagstone texture and we'll grab this ambient occlusion and just drag it on top. So this is the, the flagstone ambient occlusion and we're gonna set the levels on this and we just wanna black out everything between the stones. So about right here. And I'm gonna select the color range. I'm gonna click the black and hit okay. Now we can turn off this AO and click on our grass and then hit the mask mode. And now our grass is in between the stone, but it is a bit sharp looking. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna back up Go back to where we have the little marching ants around the stones and go to select modify feather and i'm going to set this to about five and then i'll click the mask button again and now it's a softer edge around the stones next let's do it with the moss so we'll go into our moss folder and grab the albedo and the ao and we will rasterize both layers. And I'm gonna set the AO to multiply and then convert them into a standard single object. Again, we're going to use the mask, but what I would like to do is use a, a different level set of the mask and I'll show you why. So let's go back into our flagstone AO and in here, I'm going to select the color range again, but this time I'm going to adjust the fuzziness. And then again, select modify feather. And now we only have the moss in select certain areas. And we'll go ahead and click the mask button here. So now we have this moss just in certain select areas around the stone. If you would like, you can also add an adjustment layer to it, such as brightness of contrast. Make sure that you do click the adjustment layer affects all layers below this. So it only affects just the moss and you can darken it up a little bit We'll add a little contrast so it separates itself from the grass itself. And at this point, you now have a diffuse texture pretty much done that is completely unique to your project. No one else would have this. And that would be how to combine PBR textures together to create a specular or metallic workflow. And also how to combine separate texture sets into one. Now, you might say, well, how do I get my normal maps? Great question. Let's go back in to our folders. And first I'm going to go ahead and put this all into a folder here. And we're gonna grab our normal maps. So here is our flagstone normal. Let's go and grab our grass normal. And our moss normal. And then finally, our stone normal. Now, with the stone, we have the stone and we have the, the flagstone here. I'm going to rasterize all of these layers and we're gonna set our stone to overlay on top of the flagstone. And I can go ahead and combine those. Now, we might say we want the stones to be a bit more prominent in our normal map. So what I like to do personally is duplicate that and set the second duplicate there to overlay. And it just makes the normal stand out a little bit more. We can go ahead and combine that too. Next up, with the grass, the grass again is covering everything. So what we can do here is we can control click the mask of our grass layer go here into our grass, normal map layer, and just click the mask button again. And now the grass appears in between the stones. We can do the exact same thing for the moss. Control click our moss mask layer, click the moss normal map, and then click the, mat, uh, the mask button. And now you're done. You have a normal map 
complete it. And you'll end up with something that looks like this. Now, we need a little bit of a specular and roughness map. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. One is to go into your diffuse texture. We'll go ahead and flatten the image just so I can get this quickly. And you can desaturate it and then set your levels. And you could use something like this if you wanted for a roughness map and invert it for a specular. Or what you could do is do the same thing that you did with the normal maps. So let's go back into here again and we'll grab our flagstone. And here is our glossiness, okay? So I'm gonna grab that glossiness map and put it right there. We'll do it next with the stone texture because that was the next layer. There's that. And then the next one, we can grab our grass. Here's the glossiness for that. And then we'll do it for our moss. And that's all done. So now we can rasterize these. So again, with our stone, I'm just going to set this to overlay, but it kind of darkened it up a little bit. So what I'm going to do is set my levels and just bring this up to about here. Next, with our glossiness for grass, we will control click our grass mask, click our glossiness layer and then click mask, and then do the same thing with our moss. So it's exactly how we did the normal maps. And there you go. If you would like to adjust individual levels for individual layers, you can definitely do that. So if you wanted to make the stones less glossy or the grass more glossy and vice versa, you could do that. So here, for instance, I would like the grass did not be nearly as glossy as the stone. I could do this and then do the same thing for the moss, even less glossy than that. And that would be a great map. You can then take that and invert it. And you could use it as almost like a specular map if you wanted to. So that is how you would end up here at this point. I hope you enjoyed this video on how to take multiple texture sets from gametextures.com and combine them into something completely unique in Photoshop and how to use PBR textures in a specular or metallic workflow. Thanks for watching. My name is Sky King and I will see you all next time.